Welcome to the Philip Show. If you haven't grabbed your coffee or your tea or your hashtag, grab it. Mm. So, so, so this is the season, and I think every single show I talk about something that is going on in like the main conversation out there in media. This is the season where everybody's online looking to buy stuff. What are you going to get? But what attracts you to these things, right? So we see so much going on. There's videos, there's reels, there's products, there's people just talking, but all of it has to do with imagery. And how does that imagery even come about? And why are people so fascinated and excited to capture these moments, these products, these pictures? And why are we so enamored by the fact that they did that? And then we go buy it, right? Uh, let me tell you, because see, this is a, is a product. See, that's a cup. See how I did that? And you can just buy the cup. I'm just joking with you. But, but today, uh, we have a visionary and a commercial product photographer with a specialization, get this, a specialization in high-end luxury footwear. So welcome to the show, Demetrius Neal, all the way from St. Louis. Hey. hey, what's going on, Phil? How you doing, man? How are everybody doing today? Good, man. We're doing great. I'm loving the hat. Uh, for sure. Always ripping. Always ripping. Yeah. I'm always ripping. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so I want to get to your background, but I want to start from right where I kind of uh, opened up the show. You Ooh. know, we're also crazy about imagery, whether we know it or not. We buy what we Ooh. see. We are attracted to what we think is attractive based on our eyes. For you sure. know, in now, you know, you being a photographer, what, first of all, how does that work to your benefit as a photographer that we're so captured by just seeing stuff all the time? Well, uh, how it works in my favor is, is that, you know, imagery, when it comes to being a consumer, that's the first thing anyone sees. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's a Louis Vuitton purse, Prada, Dior, Nike, Adidas, Puma, whatever favorite brand, you know, we both know like when you're on your phone and you're searching things or you're shopping those analytics those algorithms tend to put those brands in your face that you shop with the most and those yeah. images normally entices you to say oh that looks good on my shoulder or that shirt will look good on my on me or that color looks matches good with my skin or i have mm -hmm. some shoes that match that same color shirt i should buy that shirt and make it an outfit so there's various things from the consumer standpoint that will make someone look at the imagery and replace whatever model that's in that, you know, that image with themselves to say, hey, that can be me. You know, yeah. that's the inspiration of like even we could take products as a, a various variety of subjects. They sell you a lifestyle. You see a pair of Christian and Louis Vuittons, you're like, ooh, that looks that look good on my feet or my legs look good or that will match the skirt that I'm that I'm wearing, or you may see a pair of Tom Ford and be like that them black shoes with my black suit for enough for this, you know, this specific event will match well. So, yeah, you know, being able to be a consumer myself with certain brands that I like myself, I'm able to adapt that, that mindset into shooting products in a way that is very, very enticing for the consumer. A lot of times we don't really realize the, um, the intentionality. Very, behind very. what we're looking at like you just mentioned a lot of things that some people don't know that kind of um, meticulousness goes into taking those photos you mentioned that this might match this outfit it's a feeling it's a lifestyle it's that's built it's projected yep. that way and there's so many different ways that you can capture things there's fashion photographers yep. um, there's runway there's event but you chose product photography why how did you gravitate to product and more specifically shoes man that's a good question so my dad's an architect oh. and i always fell in love with architecture very mm -hmm. modern design houses i love very clean lines uh graphite granite concrete metals uh mm -hmm. the way the light pierce through buildings and create like this mm -hmm. feeling is who was always something that was i was interested in uh so it's really more so design for me. Like I'm a big fan mm. of design that's well crafted. Uh something that's well crafted with a lot of intentionality behind it. 
I always had a thing for products, electronics. You know, I love, I always had a thing for tennis shoes. I used to like get the old East Bay magazine when I was young. And I was just like flipping pages and pages and pages of East Bay, the Sean Kemp's, the Jordans, the, the Grand Hill, the Penny Hardaway's, the Shaquille O'Neal's. I mean, any shoe that was in there, the Bo Jackson's, uh, I was circling them because I was just intrigued with design. And I really didn't know like where it was going to like take me just mm -hmm. yet. But I, I always had a thing for like creativity. So me and my dad used to draw comic books when I was younger. Wow. And uh, I just didn't know like where it was going to go. Kind of got sucked into the corporate world a little bit. Go to school, get a four year degree, you know, mm -hmm. go to work. And uh, I just found myself being very unhappy doing it. You know, mm -hmm. there was always a situation of being laid off. You know, I could be honest, getting fired from a job, you know, some crazy things. And one day I just was like, you know what? I'm going to take a leap of faith. And uh, a situation happened in my life that granted me that opportunity to take that leap of faith. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to trust in God and, and wow. follow the creative path. And it worked. Like, it worked. <laughs> I'm still working hard at it, you know. Uh, you know, some people be like, man, you, you know, you, you, you the real deal. But I still feel like I got more. Uh, to accomplish so design was like a real big thing and it's like understanding design uh, you know a lot of times we see a lot of things in the world and we don't know why we like them we just know we like them yeah but now in my mind i want to take it a step further like all right let me go find a designer who designed this shoe and let me ask some key questions well why did you make the soul be why is it six like this and opposed to ten like this why is getting the the story uh important for for your work why is that kind of in your why so getting the story is like super important because story craft like everything about how we shoot so mm -hmm. i'll give you an example let's say like if i'm shooting a shoe and they want the shoe to feel very heroic uh like it's like say like if they want the shoe to mimic like a comedian standing on stage he's by himself so my mind goes okay well let's go to some of the the, the, the most notable stand up you know uh stand up comedians that we know richard pryor eddie murphy and i'll go back and look at those uh those you know our special that they did and i'll look at the lighting i'll Ooh. see like as richard pryor is walking around or eddie murphy's walk eddie murphy is walking around how's this light how is it hitting him how's it reflecting him so in my yeah. mind i'll be like okay if you want this shoot to look like a stand-up comedian like very heroic then i'll just shoot a spotlight on the shoe and that'd be the light, right? And, and I want to see the picture now. Exactly, and slightly bring the background up just to have like some ambient tone in the background or ambient light in the background so you can see the details in the background of the stage. But it's that type of storytelling that once you shoot the imagery like that, then the marketing company, the agency, or the actual company itself can take it and build that campaign around it and it'll flow mm. when they release it out to the public they're like oh i get it like they could be like this is a this shoe is a standalone shoe and it does this so you really got to be like open-minded to uh being able to think outside the box a lot of times and creating light and, and, and specifically crafting that light to give you a feel or give yeah. you like emotion or the most important thing is provoking an emotion to make you mm. say you know what i I think I I think I want that shoe. Like I think I want to go try that shoe. Yeah. And that's the key part I think people don't realize. Once I can get you inside the store, it's kind of like I got, I got yeah. you. I, yeah. Well that's well that's that's the um that's the reason why somebody would hire you. It's like I need you to capture the essence, the story, the feel, the experience, and not even just capture, but amplify For sure. that For sure. that 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 kind of that feeling to get them in you know now i got to, i got a question for you this is off, oh, yeah. off subject not so off yeah. subject but so you know we um we have iphones we have androids we have people taking pictures everybody's a photographer nowadays there are um, filters and lighting kits and all of these kinds of things and i don't want to say that they're bad but what is your take on the industry now where if let's say you do what you do okay. and i can have a product shot or shoot just here in my apartment and what's what's the difference 
So I think people don't understand how important having professional photography is. Mm. Anybody can shoot their products on the iPhone, post it to their Shopify, post it to their website, and sell. The issue becomes is if you're trying to compete with high-end brands like a Nike or a Puma or West Elm or let's say like, hey, what's another big brand out there that we all know? Let's say like a Target okay. or some some caliber of brand like that. If you go on their website, it's professional photography. Because the thing of it is, is that your mind subconsciously see photography and judge it immediately. You don't know that you're doing it, but you're doing it. And you be like, ah, oh, that picture not that great. So I don't know if I really like that product. Mm -hmm. Example, like it happens all the time. I normally buy stuff based on the packaging. If the packaging is great, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sold. Like, okay, cool. Like, let me try this. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah. It could be the worst product known to man. Yeah, yeah. But that packaging is killer. I'm sold on it, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. man. So that's the same thing with photography. Like you don't want to short in your business by trying to take shortcuts and get things done. You want, if you want people to have the full experience of your brand, your product, you want to be able to like, you know, get that professionalism, professional photography, uh, professional PR, a pro professional website designer, professional logo maker, because you want people to look at your brand and take your brand seriously. And definitely when people like that know me and know what I do, they always tell me like, oh, man, I was at the store and I seen some work and I was like, man, this don't like Demetri stuff. And mm. so people are comparing it once they know what you do and who you are. They compare to work all the time. And it's like, oh, so now you train somewhere, train people to understand like what good photography is and what they can do to 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 your product and how we can in, invoke that that emotion to get that yeah. consumer in that door or on that website and that's the other thing people don't realize when you're buying stuff off, off the website you don't have you can't physically grab it and look yeah. at it it will be tangible to you in your hands right there you're like <laughs> on a screen like looking at it and like oh okay so yeah. that picture has to speak a thousand words to convince that consumer i'll put that in my card and buy it that's fine mm. I'll put it and buy it so that's what that's the impact that imagery has so we're using an iphone using all the filters uh it's, it's cool it's fun uh is you know you out having a good time take a photo put a filter on it it's all great and dandy but for professional work uh i don't think it's the best idea to do uh mm -hmm. and and there have been times where i've had clients try to do that they end up always calling me because they realize they're like, well, wait a minute, this ain't working like I thought it was. It's because people can people will look at your website and your photography and be like, no, nah, they don't take their business seriously. I'm not mm. I'm not gonna buy from you. But if they see that you took it seriously with the imagery, the website, the logo, you know, all that, then you you you're convincing that customer that this is a, this the real deal. Yeah, you it's know? an investment. You know, it's an investment. For sure. Yeah. You had mentioned that um your father was an architect. Yep. And where, so you're from St. Louis. I want to get to like, who are you? Who are you? You know, like you're from St. Louis and what was St. Louis like? And how did you get to be this photographer that everybody is like seeing and looking like his work? They're not like you, you know, how did, who, who are you? And how did you, where'd you, where'd you start? So born and raised in St. Louis, uh st louis is a very it's a big small city mm. it's big in the 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 numbers of people but the landscape is kind of small mm. so we're like right next to each other kind of like everybody knows everybody in the city for for the most part you know mm. if you pop in and out the popular places um i picked up a camera seven years ago um oh. uh, i have to give a, a big shout out to one of my close female friends her name is erica uh one day she just bought her a new olympus camera and uh she was like hey i'm about to go to the park you want to go and i was like i ain't got nothing to do let's go to the park again so she's taking pictures i'm just like ah oh, whatever I'm like she's taking pictures and the phone rings she picks up the phone she's like hey hold this camera i'm like all right cool so she's on the phone i mean for a while philip like she's on the phone and i'm <laughs> like phone. <laughs> i'm like okay so yeah. I was like, why not? 
So I grabbed the camera, just naturally, not knowing nothing about cameras, just naturally yeah. knowing, like, put your eye there, there's the button. Boom, that's the first shot. Then second shot, and I'm just, I'm just shooting, not knowing nothing. She like, hey, we gotta go. I gotta go take her or something. Cool. I get home. She calls me. She's like, hey, like these last like 15 to 30 shots. Like, I didn't shoot these. I was like, oh, that was me. Like, I was just playing around. She was like, hey, man, like, you might want to like take this seriously. And I was like, Yeah, man, whatever. I ain't taking it. Like, it's photography, whatever. Yeah. So she called me the next day. We went down to a place in St. Louis called CD Garden. I had no, it's crazy. We ran into the guy, which I owe him a lot of credit to. His name is Lance Omar Thurman. She ran, he does all of her family portraits. Mm. The couple that he was photographing, have, I mean, he's taking pictures of, I went to college with them. Wow. So we all ran into each other and it was like, hey, what's going on, man? How you doing? And it was just like, we all was talking. Mm -hmm. He ended up giving me his card. Lance gave me his card. So I went home, Philip, and I'm just sitting at my computer and I'm like, all right, man, like, what I'm going to do with this card? I was like, look, man, just jump out on faith. Like, whatever. Got the pictures from Erica, put them in a message to him, sent it to Lance. I was like, look, man, it was nice meeting you. Oh, I really appreciate it. You know, the knowledge you gave me right there. I don't know if you got enough time or not, but I would really love, you know, for you to be my mentor and just kind of mm -hmm. teach me the about photography. Didn't think nothing of it. This guy's a busy guy. He is mm -hmm. good. About 45 minutes later, he was like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Wow. I like your energy, man. Like, you seem like you're hungry about it. And that's what really started my photography career. So, like, I, did, I didn't get paid for, like, a whole year. Uh, Philip. I was just working under him, just learning. Just what learning. Um, What that's made cool. you – what was it about photography that made you stay – invested in it and not because a lot of people have things that they enjoy and then yeah. if they reach the point where you did where you have the opportunity to do it but invest in yourself for you know for free um yeah. there's really no there's no really residual at that moment why did you think like i'm gonna stick with this uh photography gave me an outlet to like actually like create at a level that i think a lot of people try to get to like in photography and like commercial product photography i control almost every aspect of what i see and what happens in that image mm. uh meaning that like if i want the bottle to be upside down i can just turn the bottle upside down <laughs> if i want a light coming from this way to create an effect i can do that so commercial product photography for me is the, the one outlet that i can literally copy i guess i copy and paste but i can paste the idea from my mind in front of me and capture yeah. it so people can see like oh this how your mind thinks. Yeah, this how my mind thinks. <laughs> um, and the other thing about that is, you know, I love, I got a thing for shooting people too, but people get tired. <laughs> hey people, people get tired pressure. and they can be tired. Yeah. Read. Yes. There you go. There uh -huh. you go. But with a product, <laughs> I can set that up, walk away from it, come yeah. back to it. It's the same thing. Yeah. It doesn't change. It doesn't move unless I move it. So it gives me the ability to control how my brain processes and think out the idea. Where like when you're shooting a person, I can't hold you for six hours or 10 hours. Yeah. I gotta yeah. get in, execute it, make sure I keep you happy, and then boom on to the next world with product photography. I can set it up leave for a minute come back and make have another idea well what if i add this to it as well and amplify yes. the image even more just being able to create on that type of level and have that type of control over my own creations one day i was at home on the couch and i seen this nike commercial and i was like who shot that and my mom started running yeah. i was like oh wait a minute it's a that's a whole nother level of like photography uh -oh. that i don't even know about so yeah. i went on Google, typed in commercial plus photography plus Nike and all these people popped up in St. Louis commercial photographers and I was like wait a minute I know Lance is a photographer but what is a commercial photographer mm. and that's why I seeing clicking on websites and seeing McDonald's and Long John Silver and Amaranth's electric company mm. here and Anheuser-Busch and I'm like wait a minute these people are shooting for these companies mm. I was hooked I was hooked I was like oh my god I can do this on a bigger scale 
you know. How did you get, um, how did you get your first, um, not just into photography, but your first foot in the door as a professional product photographer, specifically, I guess, with footwear? Because that's a very specific thing. For sure. You know? So how did you get your foot in the door and I guess remain, I see why you remained in the room, but mm -hmm. you know, how'd, how'd you do that? So uh, a lot of people don't know one of the biggest shoe companies or shoe shoe companies is uh, used to be Brown Shoes, which is now called Calera's. And they own Famous Footwear, Dr. Shows, um, Allen Edmonds, Vionic. They have like several different brands under they under their umbrella. So I was on LinkedIn <laughs> doing no doing my thing, requesting people, trying to show my work off. I ran across this, this guy named Andrew. He works at Famous Footwear. And me and him hit it off. He's like, man, your work is amazing, Demetrius. I got to get you in here to get a project done. So he linked me with their studio photographer. His name is Judd. So me and Judd had a conversation. And we just, you know, we talking. We, we shooting the crap. And um, they was like, yeah, man, we'll let you know. We got we, we really want to work with you. Uh, we got to find the right project for you. And I was like, cool. So I didn't think I was going to hear nothing back from him. You know, mm -hmm. Phil, that's part of the game. Yeah. Judd calls me. And he's like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, what's up, Judd? I ain't doing nothing. He was like, me and Andrew about to call you. Can you hop on a call with us? I was like, yeah, for sure. Hopped on the call and they were like, Andrew was like, hey, Demetrius, how you doing? I'm like, what's up, Andrew? What's going on, man? He's like, man, nothing. He's like, hey, I got a project. <laughs> wow. I got a project. And I was like, oh it's it's about to happen it's about to happen and uh i have shot products previous to that but this was like the the first like major client like recognized world you know worldwide whatever he was like i got like 10 pair of shoes i need shot and now, now right there is that normal 10 pair pair of shoes so the crazy part they called me back later that year and i shot 50 pair of shoes for them nope oh. <laughs> so Tim was yeah. like that entry, like we're gonna see what you can do. Let's sure. see, let's see what you can do. They gave me the 10 pair of shoes, and this doesn't happen often, Phil. They were like, We see your portfolio. We just kind of want Demetrius to do Demetrius. Mm. So we're gonna let you create all the concepts for I all these it. shoes. We're not gonna interfere with what you do because we know how your mind works. Smoked it smoked it like sent them the images they were like okay this is why we called you so yeah you know they paid me properly everything so i'm thinking like cool got the first job under them posted it and from there man it just like a it just, it just kept happening people seen the work people started calling um they called me back other brands you know caterpillar nike um the the you know crocs it just Ooh. it just kept going down the road you know what i'm saying like yeah the the how i knew that i was making a lot of traction in the in the industry is because one of the bigger biggest light companies in photography reached out to me it's called broncolor they were like man we've been hearing your name and we've seen the work mm -hmm. oh mm -hmm. we want to sponsor you <laughs> oh. and i was like now keep in mind philip two two to four years prior to that, when I was interning with another photographer after I interned with Lance, Lance this guy was using strictly Bronco the lights. So I got introduced to it through another commercial photographer. Mm. And one day I was talking to him and I was like, hey man, I said one day they gonna sponsor me. I don't know how it's gonna happen. Wow. One day it's gonna happen. He was like, for real? I was like, it's gonna happen. Just I'm mm. patient, you know what I'm saying? So. They called me. They emailed me. We hopped on the call. They was like, yeah, man, we want you want to sponsor you. We're going to put you on our website. We're going to do videos with you and everything. We want you to be part of the brand. And like, we like your product photography. And because I do a very niche thing in footwear, it was very attractive because they haven't seen no one really emphasize on footwear like that. Yeah, yeah man, it's just been it's been rolling since there, Philip. Like, you know, they my name just keep growing and keep growing and keep growing, growing in the footwear industry so uh yeah man like that was out my very that's what started my very first big opportunity in like the commercial world and ever since i've just been pushing 
like nonstop. What, man. what are you uh, what are you pushing for? Where is what's your goal? Honestly, to be honest with you, Philip, um, there's not a lot of African American product photographers in the industry. Uh, it's mostly, you know, uh, Caucasian women or Caucasian men that tackles the product side. And I get a lot of people who be like, man, like I never known a, you know, black product photographer. Like it, we just never, you know, we, we see other, you know, black photographers shoot people and they're great at it and all that, but not products. So it was kind of like one of those, uh, unicorn moments where I was like, okay, maybe I'm really on to something more than I think I am. Uh, cause sometimes I like to downplay what I do. Cause I just do it cause I love doing it. But for other people, it's like inspiring. It's like, they're like, I can't do a shoe like that. I can't, I can't make nothing look like this. So yeah, some days I have to sit back and like tell myself like, man, you could be trailblazing something for other little kids to look up to and say like, Hey, I like photography. Well, think about commercial photography. Uh, mm -hmm. Just not shooting people and shooting families and weddings. There's another field of photography out there that they need more influence and, cre and creatives from our community that we see products differently, right? How they market to other communities and market to our community is two totally different things, sure. you know, and there are brands that they know that we consume more than others. Just like there's other brands, other ethnicities consume more than we do. But mm -hmm. they need that fresh viewpoint of like how to market to us, you know, our community, yeah. and 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 it can hit home and relate, and and you know, so that's kind of like where I, my push is, man. It just of course, I want to be one of the best. I want to be one yes. of the best. I want to be one of the best. Like they, I want yeah. people to be like, hey, look, this 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 guy Demetrius, he was the truth, you yeah. know, and uh, you know, people give me my flowers now because again, I work super hard. You know to get where i'm at so honestly man philip i just stay faithful man i stay faithful to god i mean i, I thank god every day for these opportunities because they don't have this this don't have to be my life i didn't think this was gonna be my life uh but through his you know through his grace and his glory like this is what i'm doing so it's more than just a passion for me it's kind of like what i felt god called me to do to serve and to bring other people in and show them different ways of like being successful and, you know, doing creative things. I love that. And I love the, um, the example component of it, you know, to show people like that sometimes people need to see it. Representation is there part you of go. that. Representation. You know, sometimes Thank people you. don't know that there are opportunities because they don't see anybody in those spaces. There you, know, you go. That's the paramount thing. It's like, I don't see me <laughs> there. I got a funny story. I was working way, way years ago. I was working somewhere and uh -huh. um, it was odd, but this person came in and they were like, are they hiring? And I was like, yeah. They're like, they don't hire black people. And I was like, huh. <laughs> What'd you say, Philip? Well, well, <laughs> well, 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 wait a minute. What'd you say? I, the last time I checked, but I understood what they meant. Yeah, the representation part is super big because a lot of people do not know that this is yeah. like an actual thing. And I was even shocked when I stepped into the commercial world because I didn't know like this was like a career, like you could make a career out of this. And there are people are, are doing very well yeah. taking pictures, Philip. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know some I guys are doing very well, <laughs> man, like taking pictures. And um, it's just inspiring. This is like, I just want to be. I just want to live in God's purpose and do what I'm meant to do. And if that's leave that, if that's to leave an impact on photography and the show, you know, even my daughters, they're like, Hey, just follow your dreams. Like just follow them. Don't worry about what I think. Don't worry about what nobody else think. Just do it. Cause at the yeah. end of the day it's your life. You got to live for you. You can't live for daddy. You can't live for your mama. You got to make sure you're doing something that you absolutely love. And that's like the message I want to send you. That is important. And you have two daughters. I do. Got two babies. Oh. 12 and 15. Wow. So you still busy. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. I, I got I to keep working. I spend a lot of money. So <laughs> look, I'll be hurting, Philip. I'll be hurting. I'll be hurting. <laughs> be hurting. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so as we uh, conclude, I got some fun questions for you. Okay. Ooh, you ready? All right. 
iPhone or Android? Philip, what kind of question is this? I think you know the answer. I'm, I'm just, you know I'm the asking answer. the, I'm asking the questions that people want answers to. iPhone. 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 Okay. Look, look, puts Android down. <laughs> iPhone, Philip. <laughs> iPhone. Okay. For sure. okay. Uh, favorite holiday? Thanksgiving. What? Ooh. Thanksgiving. No, I'm so serious. I look forward to Thanksgiving. One, because of family time, because I love my family, love being around my family. Mm -hmm. But two, the food. The food. <laughs> the food. Yeah, it is slamming. Okay, wait. Oh, now here we go. So what's more important, now that you said that, what's more important for the, the dinner? The stuffing or the cranberry sauce? Cranberry sauce. Cranberry, cranberry sauce. sauce. For cranberry sure. sauce or mac and cheese? Is that the right? I will probably have to right? say still cranberry sauce, man. Cranberry, okay. Is, do, you, um, do you prefer the cranberry sauce in the can, the jelly, or the chunky? Jelly. <laughs> <laughs> I love jelly. it. I love it. And what is your favorite movie to watch? Oh my God. Off the back probably would be right now, John Wick. Wow. Okay. John Wick. You're the second person that's that um in two days somebody else mentioned that I had to put that on my the one thing about John Wick that I love so much is like the lighting. Mm. Like the lighting is just spect spectacular. Yeah. Like whatever whatever DP lit that in in director. Yeah, man, they knew what they was doing. That, yeah. lighting, that lighting is amazing in that movie. Oh my God, I'm gonna have to look at it. Somebody was really talking about it. And I'm like, uh-huh, okay, but you're the second person that said that. Yeah, John Wick is it. All three of them, all four of them actually. I think it's four of them right now. Yeah, cause it's a whole, well, I guess the holidays are coming up. You sit down and make, make it a make a day of it. Man, you John good, Wick. man, John, hey, John uh, Wick, man. John Wick, that's what it is, that's what it is. Yeah, for, um, for somebody, a young person, or even a person who's further along in life, yep. who has dreams, but they're apprehensive, who thinks they want to step out, but they just don't know, what advice would you, do you give them? My advice would be, honestly, Philip, is to find God. Mm. Honestly. You got, I think, for what we do, for what creatives do, there's always a level of scrutiny that comes from family, people, audience, contributors, whatever. Um, but your faith has to be so strong in what you believe in and what you're doing that you're like unwavered. Like, mm -hmm. and that's something that I learned in what I was doing. Love my mom and dad to death. Love them to death. When I told them I was going to be a commercial photographer, they was like, ha! what are you talking about? Like, cause they didn't know that like photography was a thing and like you can make a living off of it. And so I have to, sh I have to prove it to them. Like I had to show them the work I was doing, show them the clients that I was working with, show them what I was doing for certain companies and businesses. And they were like, oh my God, like this is a thing. But I think a lot of times we let family, friends, uh, society, community, parents influence us that our dreams are not real and they are very real. And the reason I say guys, because how I know they're real, because he's the only one that can plant those dreams inside of you. So they are very real. So like to any young person or even mature person who was, you know, on the edge about jumping off and on that faith, I would tell you, if you don't jump out on faith now, you will never jump off. Mm. There is no perfect time. There's no perfect time for this. You just got to do it. Yeah. And be di di uh, diligent and like, setting your boundaries, you know, you know, not, you know, slacking and just keep going and keep going. And even when you feel like you're not making leeway, you are actually making leeway because you don't know who might call you that next minute, that next five minutes, that next day, that next week, and that one opportunity to change your entire life. So mm -hmm. I always tell people, man, keep your faith in God, find faith, find God and find faith because you're going to need the faith to carry you through this process. I love it, find faith. 
And you just got to do it. You got to step out the boat, Peter. You got to step That's out it, the boat. Man. That's all you can yeah. do. You try. <laughs> it works good. If you delete, and if you if you tried and it don't work, you tried it. It's cool. And you still and you still learn something. You still learn something. So yeah, like your faith that faith component is like humongous. So big. It's, it's, it's humongous. Demetrius, thank you so much for uh, for being here. Your website. Tell us what your website is. Uh, my website is uh, www.dlneal, D as in dog, L as in Larry, last name Neal, uh, N-E-A-L.com. Uh, you will see all my work, you know, mostly, you know, tennis shoes, shoes, and some things uh, I shot that are not tennis shoes. Uh, my website will be have a re uh, update at the beginning of this year. I got a lot of new work coming. Uh, I actually jumped into directing now, so I'm a director too, so I'm directing motion pieces so i got a couple of pieces i'm gonna put on the, on the new website that i haven't showed uh really nobody yet so i'm just you know staying patient and waiting to the new year yeah listen i can't wait to see what's coming up in the new season yeah, be awesome. sure, sure, man. Congrats, sure. to, congrats on the uh directing that's amazing uh it's a thing it's 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 a, it's a trans thing. it's a transition yeah well demetrius thank you so much hey man thank you philip and uh to your audience man thanks for the for the time and i appreciate appreciate you guys you know what you guys the best and keep keep your face strong and keep fighting forward definitely thanks for that <laughs> all right philip all right man so that is uh demetrius and he and his website are incredible i've seen the website so i can say that right now and there's going to be some updates coming um congratulations to him for directing as well just continuing to progress um, continuing to keep it moving. One of the things that I'm taking away is, you know, what are you passionate about? What is it that you're dreaming? You will never reach your goal if you don't start. You will never move to the next level unless you take that first step forward. So whatever that is, have the faith to believe that you can do it and just take that step. So go to philiporework.com for more and you'll see more about um, Demetrius Neal there. And as usual, you are the best you in the world. I will see you next time here on The Philip Show. Don't